Yeah, you know, there's a, a funny saying that I've heard um, around here before where Zip is the first to drive the bus through a brick wall <laughs> and smashes everything and then, and then other people follow behind. Yeah, come pick up the it. pieces and like... <laughs> Chaz here, and we are in Indianapolis at the Zip headquarters. And today, Senior Advanced Development Engineer Dave Morris is going to run me through the Zip lobby. And you may say, who cares about a lobby? But I'm saying the Zip lobby has the history lesson of Zip. From the tri-spokes, to the disc wheels, to the 303, the 404, the 101. We're going to check it out. Let's go inside and find out what's good, huh? You create all of these amazing products. Uh, technically, I come up with some of the ideas that become these products. So I'm um, trying to figure out what the cool new product might be in the future. And most of those ideas end up in the trash. Some of them end up on uh, bigger, uh, better teams that will take it to production. That's pretty rad. So basically, you predict the future of going fast. Trying, yeah, trying to. We got a good physical timeline here of the company's history. Uh, and the reason why Zip is in Indianapolis is because it started off as an IndyCar uh, garage shop making parts for race cars. Nice. Uh, so legend is the, the very first Zip part came about when um, an IndyCar engineer went to a trade show and saw a bicycle disc made out of aluminum that weighed like 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And he's saying to himself, I could do better than this. So he went back to his uh, garage and started playing with carbon fiber and composites and oh. came up with the first zip composite disc, which is very similar to this awesome- The 1150? Green, yeah, the 1150 over there. Um, so that was the first product that uh, came from the zip brand. And for the first couple of years, zip stuff was made in the same room as IndyCar stuff. Like yeah. they were just side by side. It's like a history of speed right there. Totally, yeah. And that's kind of in the DNA of the brand still today. We're still in Indianapolis. You can still hear the IndyCars practicing and racing just a couple miles south. Um, so we like to imbue that history into everything that we make. So for me, soft spot in my heart, Zip 3000, the coolest tri-spoke that's ever been made, that will ever be made <laughs> in my opinion. Especially bike messengers go for it, right? So the tri-spoke is a really aerodynamic front wheel and it's a good, uh, substitute for a disc. Discs are kind of hard to handle when you have the steering axis moving yeah. around, especially in crosswinds. Um, so that tri-spoke was the answer to how do we get an aerodynamic wheel on the front and uh, still keep your, keep your two wheels on the ground. Eventually we moved on to spoked wheels. Turns out you can get a little bit lighter with that and they're less affected by crosswinds. Um, so handling is improved, yeah. um, especially when you're worried about going uphill pretty fast. So this is the prototype of what becomes our mainstay zip wheel for years to come. Yeah. We've got the golf ball. And I know it's not called <laughs> the golf ball, but I mean, essentially in my mind, took that technology of like, why do golf balls fly so far? The dimpled technology. Um, yeah, so this is the Firecrest wheel. It's got the, the patented dimple technology and uh, also known for, for being super blunt on the nose, which yeah. improves aerodynamics quite a bit. This brings us into the modern era of zip stuff. So we had our, our predecessor wheel. Now we're into 2010 for this one. Um, carbon clincher also. This yeah. was the first carbon clincher model that we produced. The present day, mm. we've got, I, I always think of it as the whale wheel because this, this, the scallops were taken from the fin of a whale, right? Yeah, that, that's fair. You could call it whale wheel. Maybe not uh, the correct the, term, but you the know. The te technical term is tubercle. So uh, humpback whales have these knobs in the front of their fins called tubercles. And what they do for a whale is the same thing they do for this wheel. They basically help keep the flow attached when you're going through uh, pretty high crosswind scenarios. So it improves handling, improves aerodynamics. Um, and this is the first wheel where we employ what's called biomimicry, where we're looking to nature yeah. for solutions to really, really hard problems. And instead of spending years iterating and engineering and doing computer sim simulations, you try to take what nature's already done and evolved over millions of years and just tweak it to fit what you want it to do. Also, what's cool about that, the hyperfoils, is it also benefits the strength to weight ratio of the wheel. So these are structurally favorable bumps that allow us to take material out and maintain the strength of the rim. Lighter wheel, just as strong without, without as much carbon, so it's yeah. lighter and faster. You're going faster. And then, personal favorite, hit the brakes, hit the disc brakes, <laughs> zip disc wheels with the zip disc hub. Like, this is the epitome of going fast and also stopping. Because if you're gonna go fast, you gotta be able to stop. 
break later into the break corner. later exactly break later into the corner <laughs> yeah so this brings us into the modern uh, zip product line where we have carbon clincher we've got the hyperfoils we've got disc brakes um, it's all in there and the bike industry is changing so fast right now um, who knows how long this will stay current but right now this is the best that we have um, it's a really fun wheel to ride and it's one of the ones where you put it on your bike and you notice it right away. I can personally attest to having put not the 858, but the 353 NSW onto my bike and it was just, it felt faster. You know, I'd be pedaling and I'd stop pedaling <laughs> and I would somehow continue to go faster and be accelerating even though I wasn't pedaling and I was like, this is Almost amazing. magic. It is. Um, these two wheels of note actually uh, were the first to employ our impress uh, printed graphics. So oh. that also lightens up the wheel, improves aerodynamics. We didn't have any uh, any decals that are obscuring the dimples. Yeah. Beyond the rim, Zip also makes all the hubs. You can't have a good rim. You can't have a good wheel without a good hub. These are the ZTEX top of the line. ZTEX, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Dimples in the hub shell. Um, today, our hubs are still made by SRAM. They're made in our um, German office in Schweinfurt. This is the latest, greatest cognition with axial clutch technology. You can hear it, it just sounds like a little, bit a little faster, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is our cognition hub set that's in all of our NSW top of the line wheels. And the axial clutch was actually a really cool technology that um, was introduced where we use, we used to use magnets to get the two clutch plates to engage. Now we use a, um, an elastic, it's called Silomer, some high tech, uh, foam stuff that acts as a spring to Whoa. keep the, the clutch pl plates engaged. But yeah, this is the cool stuff we have going on now in our NSW range. All right, so we've got wheels, we've got hubs, we've got handlebars. And did you know there was frames? 1992, the Zip 2001. Dude, what what is happening here? So again, all about speed. Uh, Obviously. We, we didn't need this whole seat tube area or seat stay area. Get rid of it. Um, so. Uh, Y-frame, uh, pretty radical. I alluded to the golden age of aero in the mid 90s um, until the UCI changed their rules. Um, but this was the frame that we produced for uh, several years. This particular paint job was an upgrade because you can see all the carbon weave in there. So it had to be perfect. You couldn't paint over any mistakes. I mean, this just looks faster than anything else that was on the road. In like 1993, like how do you compete with this? I mean, you have to be fast to ride it. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you just look like a dork. This is pretty sentimental. So this, were, th this bike has signatures from all of the employees at Zip at the time. And what's really cool is we have, well, Lee Sargent on the head tube right here, he founded Zip. But then we have back here, Pam Baker is still an employee. I think she's the longest tenured employee. Oh, yeah, so she's still here. Zip. She can walk in and be like, that's me on yeah, the bike. For sure. Void? The, yeah, the, the predecessor to the Jens Voigt in the Peloton was Jackie Duran, who would go on hopeless breakaway attempts. Um, so aerodynamics was super important for him. Uh, he took to zip pretty well, and this was uh, the first pro deal with zip wheels on it. My dude, that was fantastic. It was so great to learn the history of zip from the racetrack to bike racing and everything in between, but it really made me interested, like, how does all this stuff get made? Chaz, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, I think that I can take you in the factory and show you a bit more cool stuff. That is amazing. That sounds great. Let's do it. And don't forget to like and subscribe and find out how the zip stuff gets made in the factory. Let's go check it out.